paying people to become, you know, a friend, you know, to move where I am and then become friends. And it's strange. And then usually it, it, it's almost like spiritual warfare. You know, we get, you, you know, they get run off eventually. You know, and uh, you wonder, I guess what happens is I don't, you know, I, I pop the thing. I, I find out about it. I figure it out. And then, and then, then they run away. Well, and that's why, and what you're what you're describing happens quite frequently, and that's why when I uh, when I correspond with a lot of these victims, I I tell them watch out who you meet on social networks, watch out who you, when people are coming up and and intentionally wanting to be your friend, um, be real cautious, be especially be cautious who you talk to this about, and as you said, that's one of the the pluses of of having a, a TI group in your community. Uh, it gives you somebody that you can vent to without risk of being parked in front of a psychiatrist who's going to further victimize you. Um, and we've tried to foster, through freedom from covert surveillance and harassment, we've tried to foster splinter groups of that organization in every state. Because this is nation, it's global, but in this nation, who most of the people that I correspond with are, are here, it's in every state. And, and the only state where we're not seeing gang stalking along with the the electronic harassment are in states like Minnesota, um, 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 Dakotas, uh, Wyoming, you know, and, and that's strictly a function of not enough population there for them to put boots on the ground to stalk you. Those people are still getting electronically harassed. They're not noticing the breaking and entering and the stalking, and that's strictly because there's they don't have people there to do it. Wow. Boots on the ground would mean, uh, obviously, having people in your neighborhood, people that you know, people at the gym, people at work, which is called mob stalking, by the way, at work. It's, uh, when, they, when they turn against you um, en masse, almost you know, orchestrated. And you wonder what they're getting out of it. And what we know from uh, Dr. John Hall, my guest today, author of A New Breed. And go check that out. It's on our website. Uh, you can get there by going to zefdaniel.com. It'll bring you to the website. And you click the book on, and it will take you to the site where you can take a, a deeper look into it. But uh, so so the, there's numerous or various motivations, right, uh, John? I mean, there's, there's a lot of different... Um, things that they get out of it some for some it's just sex for some it's uh, uh perhaps thievery for others there's some kind of a surveillance thing involving the government or you know psyops or something well that's exactly right and, and i think what it all boils down to if you if you work your way up to the top of the food chain with this it, most of us think that this is a continuation of mk ultra experimentation you know, these people didn't come by this technology haphazardly. Uh, they all do appear to be networking. Um, it seems to be getting done with a, a manual because every victim is, is complaining of the exact same symptoms, the exact same scenarios as far as the stalking, the breaking and entering. I mean, there's some other smaller things that everybody is seeing. A lot of people will find a real fine uh, volcanic dust that collects all over their house. Uh, we've had several instances here in San Antonio where these perpetrators have actually spilled this dust. Uh, and it looks like the dust that if anyone owns a chinchilla, it looks like volcanic dust, the kind of dust you get for your chinchilla to bathe in. Um, it's usually placed in the air conditioning circuit, so it scatters out around the house. And its purpose is to get into your clothes and get on your skin. So when you do leave the house where they can't use x-ray imaging on you and it's at night and they're, they're down to having to use thermal imaging, or infrared imaging, it lights you up in the dark under th under infrared imaging. And yeah. that's one of the other things that we see. And everybody complains about finding this, this gritty dust in their house. So that, wow. that, that, that tells us that that part of it, at least, that these people are being provided with the technology. They're being provided with a manual of what works and what doesn't work. Mm -hmm. And that lends itself back to that the government is giving people access to this and then sitting back and watching and taking notes. And that's exactly how MKUltra was done. It was done through front companies, and it was done through universities to make it look like legitimate research. Do you think we're going to see more violent um, – well, Dr. Jolion West, let's take him for an example. Okay, if he were alive today, uh, he'd be heading this whole operation up probably. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And, and, you know, so he was the one that was uh, with, the, okay, John Hinckley, um, you, you know, uh, Sirhan Sirhan was his first uh, big hit. Um, you had um, uh, Timothy McVeigh, and, and he was the uh, top psychiatrist in on that. I mean, so this guy's really behind. I mean, it's almost like he was the architect of a lot of this. 
Oh, Jolyon West was uh, was one of the big players in MK Ultra from the beginning, and uh, if you look at some of his research, you know he was a proponent of using mind control to civilize urban environments, mm-hmm. and uh, especially in California, that was one of his big studies was using this type of technology to to civilize black unrest in black urban environments in California. That's right. So, it was I mean, the, it, it, that was in Malibu at the Nike missile base. He wanted to set up operations there. Uh, it was under Reagan, I think, and um, I, yeah, I remember the, uh, the 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 program. It actually there was some news on it, at, and the, it broke, and then it was covered up. Yeah, and that's that's one of the things that we're really combating is all the research is out there, and and if you look at, you know, the, the government doesn't spend a billion dollars on on researching mind control just to see it all in with the Church Committee and the Rockefeller Commission. You know, it, it's continued on. It's just the only thing that stopped was the leakage into freedom of information. Okay. Um, where we are today with the Obama administration, um, obviously a certain kind of um, – I almost see this like Soviet Russia, the rise of psychiatry, the rise of uh, uh, surveillance, the rise of putting more and more surveillance out there. I mean this is kind of – it's all coming to fruition. Do you think it will go more or less mainstream where – where it won't be surreptitious, where it would be more in your face. Like, for example, what I mean is there would be, say, a checkpoint and a psychiatric questionnaire to fill out at the checkpoint between, okay, Texas and New Mexico. Say, I'm going to drive down to San Antonio to see a, one of your conferences. Okay, I'm on my way to San Antonio, and I get hit at a checkpoint, and I fail the uh, psychiatric exam. <laughs> so, so, you know what I mean? It, that's that, Leaping ahead, that's the, you know, I see it coming out of the closet at some point. Well, you know, I, I don't, I don't know if it would ever come to that because the, the, a lot of the goal of this is, in the people that are being harassed, is to be able to diagnose them as either paranoid, schizophrenic, okay. or delusional, and you know, for them to come to that much of an admission, would have to admit that that, that you're a victim of technology and not a, a victim of mental illness. So that that's why I think they'll try to keep it in the dark as long as they can, and that's why our our educational efforts are really our. our our best way to save each other from this, and that's to get the people who aren't being harassed, who aren't being exposed to it, to understand that some of us are, and where we'll have a unified front across the nation of people saying this technology um, needs to be curtailed. I mean, it's never going to go away. They've invested too much money in, in perfecting it. The people who are saying it needs to be abolished, that will not ever happen. But there's certainly a lot of good that can come out of this technology. If you look at the Terry Schiavo case, yeah. you know, it was left up to her neurologist looking at archaic EEGs you know, that, that started in the, you know, were invented in the 1950s to determine whether she had any brain function or not. Well, with this technology, they could have put her under a scan and told, be able to tell if she has active thought or not, you know, in second. Mm-hmm. So, um, I mean, there are some good things, you know, smoking cessation, you know, drug cessation. Some, some, there are some good things that can come out of manipulating the mind. But unfortunately, any type of good technology that comes along usually gets enveloped by the government and used for evil. Yeah, against the people, and you know, which is what we see today. With <clears throat> I don't even know how people would even pay attention to the gang stalking now because people are being taxed to death, they're being thrown out of work, and you know, probably the gang stalking business isn't what it used to be in terms of, like you say, boots on the ground. You got to pay people to go into these communities, set up shop, and then and then hit their targets, right? Well, and that's still pretty easy to do. And one of the things, I don't know if you've experienced this, but most PIs noticed money being taken out of their accounts. And part of this technology is the ability to know all your passcodes, uh, especially those people who do a lot of their banking online. Well, any code you can think of, they have, including the code to your alarm at home. That's how they get around your alarm, the codes to your passcodes to your checking account. Um, most of this is being financed through uh, electronic bank fraud and ghost mortgaging. Um, the group here, all of the PIs that were involved in the case here, all were either real estate agents or mortgage brokers on the side as well. And um, most of their financing was being done through creating ghost mortgages, you know, where you get a large sum of money, you know, get the cash, and then right. never pay the mortgage back, and it's all done under a fake name. And when you have people that are working from the top as a mortgage broker for a bank all the way down to the person actually selling the real estate, um, that's very easy to manipulate. 
Okay, yeah, some 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 good advice. And and uh, all right, so you've come forward, and you know you would be uh, a target, obviously, for some of this kind of stuff. Do you think that the uh, your public voice on this really controversial topic and a topic that gets you in trouble, you know, people think you're nuts, has that uh, has being public helped? Well, I, I it, it certainly hasn't. <laughs> it didn't do my career a lot of favors initially. Um, that has it, it's mainstreamed enough now where people, rather than just thinking you're crazy, at least most people now will go, yeah, you know, I, I guess that sounds like that's probably possible, knowing the technology we have now. Um, the generation under, I mean, you and I are about the same age, and the generation under us, you know, the the twenty year olds. You know, they grew up watching enough movies and hearing enough about this technology where they don't have a problem believing it. it it's the people that are over 40 into their 50s and 60s who, unfortunately, are also the people with, you know, some political and financial connections to help make this go away yes. that don't necessarily believe it. And the ones that are very patriotic just find it hard to believe that our government would experiment on us. You know, despite yeah. having this most recent Guatemalan incident where Hillary Clinton had to do a public apology to. Um, the country of Guatemala for the CIA and the and the CDC intentionally infecting these people with gonorrhea and syphilis, mm-hmm. you know, to study oh. it covertly. Um, they they still just refuse to believe that our government would experiment on us. Well, well, you know, but at the same time, these are people that, you know, they're living in denial because they don't want to see their country as evil, and uh, and they feel some of them too old to do anything about it. You know, it's too big of a problem if it's really true. How are we, you know, it's it's too negative. It would it would poison their outlook on life. And um, and then there are others of us who just think, okay, so you roll your sleeves up and you get busy. You know, you, you just have to go at it. Uh, okay, free speech, you know, when they start curtailing free speech, this may be one of the things that they don't want you to talk about. But, um, or maybe that it's just too exotic. Uh, you, you know, still, the, the, the government is, is really tracking people that are talking about, um, you know, politics and are really angry people, and they're, they're starting to target in on those, you know, as, as potential killers in the future. You know, at one of my uh, conferences, I, I had an older gentleman came up to me, and he said, you know what, it, it, it's an interesting topic. He said, and his take on it was, he said, you know what, the only problem I have with this, if our government had this capability, he goes, somebody would have been complaining about it before now with some credibility. And, and I said, well, that's already happened. That's been happening for a decade, people, or, or longer, that people have been complaining about this. And he goes, but all of those people are crazy. And I said, well, that's exactly how this technology works. I mean, it doesn't matter what your credibility factor is. I mean, if you come out and look at, you know, Quaid's been a successful actor. You know, I've been a, a, a successful physician with a good practice, with no malpractice claims, and, mm-hmm. uh, you know, no, nothing, nothing against my, my uh, sensibility as a physician. Right. And right. the same thing happened to me the minute I wrote this book. Half the people thought I was a genius. The other half thought I was wacko. And uh, and I told him, I said, that's exactly how this is meant to work. It's meant to make, make people who don't know anything about the technology question the sanity of those complaining about it. Oh, gosh, you know, they got it. Yeah, they got it kind of sewn up. I mean, they have the advantage, definitely, uh, the the uh, perpetrators of it. And um, But like you said, these networks are global. So you would say the same thing is going on in Europe then, than, than we see here. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. I've had uh, – there's an, a very large group of TIs that, uh, that contact me on a regular basis from the U.K. Mm-hmm. I've recently heard from several TIs in Germany, from France, from Italy – uh, recently had a uh, TI that has, has corresponded with me on a regular basis from Yemen commit suicide. Oh. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a global, global thing. Yeah, and and commit- every, every industrialized nation has worked on this technology. Okay, so suicide. Now, that's a, a common theme here. Once a person's targeted, a lot of times they're just driven to suicide. They're broken down. They can't sleep. They 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 get paranoid, and all that stuff happens, and eventuates in a suicide. Is that the uh, is that there is that an experiment for them to see if they can get someone to commit suicide? I don't think it's necessarily their goal, and the reason I think that is if most okay. of these victims have been victimized for a decade or more, um, you know that's why when people say, well. You know, what are they getting at? What are their goals of the victimization? And that's why we think it's experimentation. If you wanted to ruin somebody's life financially and psychologically and politically, you can do that in a couple of weeks with this technology. You don't have to continue victimizing someone for a decade. And I I don't think their ultimate goal.